So now we've got Auto Mapper available, what we need to give this is a mapping profile so it's aware of what objects it should be trying to map to other objects. And what we'll do, and I'll just close down all my open tabs, inside the application, inside the activities folder, I'm just going to create a new C Sharp class and call this Mapping Profile. And press return. And what we want to do is derive from the profile class provided by AutoMapper. And we need to bring in AutoMapper inside here. And then what we need to do is give this a constructor. And we'll generate constructor mapping profile. And inside the constructor here is where we create our maps. Now I'm going to create two maps initially and we need to specify the from object and the to object. So the from object is going to be our activity and this is our domain entity so I'll bring in domain and where we want to map to is our activity DTO. And that's our first map. Now Auto Mapper is convention based and if I take a look at my activity class and I also take a look at my activity DTO class and if I just open this and split it to the right then because and let's open the activity and because AutoMapper is convention based any properties that it finds in both objects that have the same name it's automatically going to map them for us we don't need to write any additional code based on the mapping profile that we've just created. So all of these properties that are in both sides are going to be automatically mapped for us inside AutoMapper. Now the one that it's going to have problems with is the user activity and the attendee DTO. But what we can do is we can also specify an additional mapping and say create map and we also want to go from our user activity to our attendee DTO. Now we're not going to add any additional configuration to this. We want to see what we get just by AutoMapper automatically by convention trying to map the properties from one to another. And what we'll do is we'll start with our details, our activity details, and let's just go and take a look at this. And I'll open up the details.cs. And what we want to return from here is an activity DTO instead of our activity. So what we'll need to do is we'll need to bring AutoMapper in here and this provides an interface we can inject. So we'll bring in iMapper and call it Mapper and then just bring in using AutoMapper and we'll also initialize the field from parameter here as well. And then I'll just take out this dot. So what we can do, and I'll just say var activity to return equals, and then we can say mapper dot map, and then we specify the type we want to map from and the type we want to map to inside here. So it's going to be our activity to our activity DTO. And then we pass in the object that we actually want to map, which is going to be our activity. And then we can return our activity to return instead of the activity entity. What we'll also need to do is specify the return type in our API to also return the activity DTO. So let's open up the activities controller. And inside our details, instead of returning the activity here, what we'll do is return the activity DTO. And let's go and take a look without adding any more configuration and see what we get by doing this. So I'm just going to go back to my details request and resend this request. And what we get is our activities still coming back and it doesn't really look like anything's changed and we've got our attendees in here which is set to null and because nothing's changed it's going to be it's kind of difficult to <laughs> explain the benefits of this but this attendees one is interesting because now this is the event that has an attendee but 
it's set to null. We're not seeing anything in here. And what we should be seeing is our attendee, but without any properties. And like I say, AutoMapper is convention based. And if we take a look at our activity DTO, what we've called this is attendees. But this isn't what our user activities are referred to. They're actually referred to user activities. So if I change the name of this just to user activities instead of attendees, then what will happen is that AutoMapper will recognize that we want to return a list of these and it will attempt to use our mapping profile where we're mapping from user activity to attendee DTO. It's now going to pick up on that. And if I go back and resend this request, what we'll find now is that we actually get our user activities along with the user inside there. Now we don't get the properties for the user because we need to configure these because AutoMapper can work out simple mappings, no problem, as it has done in our activity. But where we've got our username, this is not available inside the user activity object. This is available in user activities and then the app user object. And the same for the display name and same for the image. But because the is host is available inside our user activity, then it has picked up this and is returning true. Now, I don't want these to be referred to user activities when I return them to the client. So what we can do is go back to our activity DTO and we can add an attribute to this so that we can still return it as activities, but call it user activities inside here. And what I can do is specify JSON property and give it a name of attendees. And I'll just need to bring in newtonsoft.json. And if we go back and take a look, what we'll find is that we're now returning this as attendees, but it still includes the user that we've added as an attendee. So I'm just going to go back and resend this request. And this time we get it back as attendees and we've got our user object inside here for the attendee as well. But what we want to do is configure our mapping profile so that we also include the username and display name. And we'll not worry about the image for now, we'll come back to this later, but we'll certainly get these two properties sent back as well with our request. And we'll take a look at that next.